How is it going everyone and welcome back to another episode of the F1 2019 career mode and uh, again I apologise it's been such a long time since I uploaded this but again I was just focusing on FIFA 20 content. Anyway we're back, we're in Canada and we have a failure in the R&D development, the, the um, chassis, not chassis update, the uh, air update, the drag update that we had ready to go has uh, failed so uh, yeah not the greatest. But we are still the fifth best team on the grid. And uh, Canada starts a string of tracks that I love racing at. Canada, France, uh, Austria, all good tracks. But anyway, let's get into qualifying. Hello and welcome from the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, home to the Canadian Grand Prix for today's qualifying session. When it comes to getting lap time out of this circuit, it's traditionally been about maximizing top speed. Do you simply remove as much downforce as possible, hang on in on the corners and max out down the straight? The teams will have arrived with all manner of parts designed to capitalize on the long straights. The cars will be that much harder to drive in the corners, but everyone will be in the same boat. So we go through with our first lap of qualifying. And uh, like I said before, Canada is a track I really like uh, in real life and on the game as well. It's one of my favourite tracks to drive on. It just I like the tracks that have that have a lot of fast. You know, you know, you're at top speed a lot of times. There's not a lot of corners at Canada. It's it's at top speed a lot of the time, uh, which makes for some really really good racing around here and uh, really good qualifying laps as well but this first lap I'm doing isn't the greatest but it's just a banker lap anyway that's what I always do we'll go out set a banker time just so I can set a time realistically and uh, yeah as we go down the final straight here into the chicane try not to hit the wall of champions I definitely did not skip the first corner of the chicane right there and uh, we come through on our first lap to do a well a not very good time a 112 6 as uh, right behind me Lewis Hamilton sets a 1.10.6 so as you can see I've got a bit of catching up to do second lap now though we've dropped down to P16 and uh, it's feeling much better the second lap for sure I definitely again did not skip the chicane corner by mistake the reason for that is I just braked too late the first time I braked too early um, and that lap, lap time only lifted us up one place as it was only 2 milliseconds not 2 milliseconds so um, 2 tenths faster um, we, we go on to a third lap now, which, um, yeah, uh, Kibitza originally gets in our way, but then gets out of our way. Very sporting of him, that has to be said. And uh, we gain a heap of time from that corner, and we just sail down this back straight now, just looking to get a decent time in. We're in P17 at the moment. I'd like to get higher than P17. Would always be nice. Do I do the chicane properly this time? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I didn't cut the corner this time, all four wheels were at least on the kerb and uh, we set a 1.11.9 which lifts us up all the way to P13 and we end up in P14 and our teammate Alex Albon ends up in P12 so he actually out qualifies us. I don't know if that's the first time he's done that, in fact I'm pretty sure that isn't the first time he's done that. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to a variant of this track back in 1978. It was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. If you want flat out racing, you've come to the right place this weekend as it's full throttle for 59% of this 2.7 mile circuit peaking at around 210 miles per hour going into the final chicane. But that speed requires discipline, and there are more than a few close walls here just waiting to punish drivers with a heavy right foot. Joining me for the Grand Prix once again is Anthony Davidson. Now, I want to ask you about Lando Norris. They're still relatively new to a sport which does have a high learning curve and, of course, little tolerance for mistakes. That's right, it is a difficult environment to come into. In junior categories, you're competing against drivers with similar levels of experience. But some of these guys in Formula One have been there for over a decade. But I have to say, in this case, it's so far so good. 
It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he starts from pole position. And Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Perez, Daniel Ricciardo, and Vettel, Leclerc, Magnussen, Gasly, and Kimi Raikkonen. Butler, Albon, Lance Stroll, Lawrence, Grosjean, Norris, Nico Hülkenberg, and Lucas Faber, Kubica, and George Russell ends our grid lineup. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. So it is a standard one stop today for the race. I do think about maybe starting on the medium tyres, but in the end, I think I go, I go against it in the end and start on the soft anyway. And uh, I do forget to change the fuel. Or do I not forget to change the fuel? No, I don't. Instead, instead I put more fuel in. Um, I don't know why I did that, but anyway, we're looking to get a good start here. We've had some decent starts of the race. Not not from the off, but five red lights are out, and we are underway here in the Canadian Grand Prix. And as always, it is a poor start from the get-go. Of course, this was before the patch of the good starts. And Lando Norris does a huge dive pump up the inside, and that completely throws me off. So I've already lost one place. Uh, because of that dive bomb and now I've got um, other people on my right I think it's Kubica trying to get past me but as we had, as we go to the end of the first lap here we're on the back of Nico Hülkenberg who had a terrible qualifying compared to his teammate Daniel Ricciardo Hülkenberg was 17th in qualifying and Ricciardo was 5th but as you can see there we get past him on the chicane we break super late which means that once again we have to skip one of the corners I promise I don't do that on every lap but we get past Nico Hülkenberg and we get back into 16th place, but we're still one place down from where we were. Sorry, two places down from where we were, where, where we qualified. Um, and uh, once again, lap two, it's now Ro Roman Grosjean who we're on the back of here. And we break late into the chicane again, but this time we're unable to get past, but we go right up his gearbox. And we are, um, we are staying right on the back of him. Do we look for a move into the first turn? Yes, we do, and we get past him. Um, you may notice, by the way, that um, in this episode, in the next few episodes, I apologise, but there isn't any replay cameras. Um, I lost the footage to the replay cameras that I had, so unfortunately we're going to have to deal without replay cameras. But, I mean, there's still enough racing in this episode, at least this one anyway, to um, to not need them. Because <laughs> uh, you can clearly see what's going on here as Roman Grosjean tries to get past me, and he does for a brief second, but we... We uh, go late on the brakes again into the turn and we get the place back straight away. And uh, we're now on the back of our teammate Alex Albon, who uh, has yet to score any points this season. We've scored every point for Toro Rosso so far this time round. And um, at the moment, well, we're not in a position to score any, either of us aren't. But uh, again, on the back straight, this is lap three. It's just... It's the same deal again, but this time Albon's looking for a move on Norris, and that slows them both down massively, which gives me a chance to get back into this fight. Albon's got DRS, I've got DRS, Norris does ha Norris also has DRS, and uh, we look for a move on the inside into turn one again on our teammate, and we get past him into turn one. So that's three laps, three overtakes. We're now back into the position we qualified in, and we're now on the back of the fellow Brit Lando Norris, and we have DRS on him. He also has DRS, but we are just too quick for him down that straight. We had a much better getaway, and um, again, it's Magnussen and Butler who were fighting into the chicane, so I just thought, you know what, bye. <laughs> I just get past both of them. Again, skipping the corner, but at that time I had to take avoiding action. I had to, I had to skip the corner there, as, well, if I didn't, I would have crashed straight into the back of both of them. And we need, we actually went into the back of Gasly there. We, we actually pushed him through that corner, but we get a poor exit out of this corner, and Gasly gets away from us for now. Um, but... We just carry on with this lap here, and as you can see, we, we close straight back up to Gasly again. He's he's not done very well for Red Bull, pretty much like he didn't do in real life. He would he, he just he's just had meh. He's just been meh. He's had a couple of good results, but nothing too special. As Magnussen looks up looks for a move up the inside of us there, and he goes for a bit of a spin. Um, he tried to turn in on us there, as you can see on the mini map. He stopped. But uh, on the same lap here, we come in for our pit stop earlier than anyone else, pretty much. The only issue is, is you, if you look behind me on the minima, Albon's also coming for his pit stop. So, um, yeah, we've double stacked for some strange reason. And uh, I'm unfortunately going to jeopardise Albon's race here because uh, I get stuck in the pit lane waiting for Russell to do his pit stop. So that's compromised Albon slightly there. And that has pretty much just... 
that was ruined his race because he's now behind Russell <laughs> as well. So uh, we come out in P18, but of course only me, Russell, and Albon are pit. So that is why we're all on the medium tyres, and we are going to the end of the race on these medium tyres. We go on to two laps later now, though lap seven. Uh, we're just um, in a bit of clean air right now, just trying to go as fast as we can. We gain some more positions through people making pit stops, of course. We come out in front of Lando Norris. Lance Stroll is the next car ahead. I, I don't think he's pit. I can't remember. I think he started on the medium tyres. So we so he hasn't, um, he hasn't gained anything on us yet, anyway. He's yet to pit. Uh, it remains to be seen if he ends up gaining anything, because, yeah, it's, um, yeah. But we're on lap 8 now as well, um, and we have Gasly right behind us here. It's it's pretty much this is what it is for the rest of the race now. Me and Gasly just battling it out, just trying to just, you know, stay ahead of each other. A Toro Rosso versus a Red Bull. We gain a couple of more positions there through Butler and I think it was Ricardo. No, it was Hulkenberg. Pitting Butler and Hulkenberg both pit. As you can see there, Gasly tries to move on my outside, but unfortunately for him, he just can't get it done. We have the inside line, so it's our turn. And lap 11, Gasly tries again, same straight. This time he's up the inside of us, and he actually gets ahead of us. Just about, yes, he does as well. We have to take avoiding action there, and, well, almost drive completely off the track, but we didn't quite do so. Gasly's not very fast, though, in a straight line. To be honest with you, neither are we with both with our Honda engine, both both drivers of course with the Honda engine, but we get a much better exit out of that corner and we're gaining on Gasly before the DRS zone is even active and we, well we just sail past him like, well, like he's in a Williams, although Williams are actually quite good in a straight line, but you know what I mean. It, 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 Toro Rosso just sailing past a Red Bull like that, I mean, that's just ridiculous, but Gasly just remains on our back the whole time we go in. We go into lap 12 now and he's still right behind us here. We're just trying to fend him off. We're on defensive mode. I don't think we're going to get gonna overtake anyone else on track. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo is 6.2 seconds ahead of us, as he, as, uh, as he said on the radio. But Charles Leclerc is actually out of the race now, which means we do gain one more position there. If Gasly doesn't get past us this time, we turn in and a, a Gasly also goes for a bit of a spin there. But... He actually recovers quite quickly there. He's actually just behind Lando Norris if you look on the minimap in the bottom left. So he recovered quite well. Uh, I don't think he went for a full 360 spin, but he definitely went for some sort of drift, I think. And uh, we go on to lap 16 now, so we've skipped, we skipped a few laps because not a lot happened. And it's Gasly who's back ahead of Norris again and right on our backside once again there. We take the inside line for the chicane. This time it was a legit crossing of the chicane. Uh, although all four wheels were off the track, they weren't all off the kerb, so technically we didn't cut the corner there. But Ricardo is still 6.2 seconds ahead of us, so now we are on full defensive mode going into the final two laps here. Lap 17, the only issue now, if anything, spin, uh, making Gasly go for a spin has just not helped at all because now Norris is even closer to Gasly and Gasly's got Norris right behind him and he's dragging Norris into this fight with him. But Gasly goes for the same move on me as Grosjean did a few laps beforehand and just didn't work because we're just so late on the brakes. We're like, we're almost like Daniel Ricciardo, aren't we, at this point? Who's the man ahead of us? We're just so late onto the brakes in every corner that we just, we have the upper hand <laughs> in every corner. That time I do skip the corner. I do skip the chicane, that is for sure. <laughs> I need to stop doing that. Uh, I do improve, my driving does improve by the way, as the series goes on, this was done ages ago, so yeah, my driving definitely does improve, I learn how to steer a bit better and just, yeah, not be as reckless, but speaking of reckless, that's what Gasly's been right now, is he wants this so badly, he wants to get ahead of the Toro Rosso, he's not been beaten by a Toro Rosso for the second time, as of course we finished ahead of him in Azerbaijan. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want it, but look at how close Norris is as well. You can't even see Gasly's dot on the minimap, he's that close to him. And look at Norris just right behind him as well. Lewis Hamilton's won the race, shock horror. And um, we're just trying to fend off a Red Bull and a McLaren right now, who are both faster than us for sure. Uh, not, not necessarily in a straight line, in the case of Gasly, but in the case of Norris, he is absolutely faster than us in a straight line. But we get such a good exit out of that corner that we end up getting just far ahead enough of both of them. Norris isn't going to do anything now. Gasly may have another go here. He is definitely catching up, that's for sure. 
Um, he does get alongside me, but again, we break late, or we break early rather, and we turn in, skip the corner, and we are going to finish in P9 for some points. Can't complain about that one. That was an excellent drive. Mercedes have pulled off a great victory here today. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. So there we go then, we finish in P9, a very, very decent result for us, once again, finishing ahead of a Red Bull driver, this of course being Pierre Gasly again, as Max Verstappen ended up in third place as you saw there, Sergio Perez getting the decent results, as as, as did Kimi Raikkonen in 5th and 6th respectively. Alex Albon ended up finishing 18th, he got past George Russell but could not get ahead of Kubica, so... Again, very poor from him. We go down, however, to 14th in the standings as, of course, Kimi Raikkonen and Sergio Perez have leapfrogged us. I can't remember if they were both ahead of us before, but Kimi certainly wasn't. Um, Alex Albon, right, smack down at the bottom. Uh, we also move down in the constructors as, again, it's Alfa Romeo and Racing Point who have gained through the results of Sergio Perez and Kimi Raikkonen. And, yeah, that is... Yeah, that's, that's how it's going to end. We've actually won our rivalry against Alex Albon as well. So, yeah, it's just been it's been great for us, not so great for Alex in our, well, in this season so far. Uh, we're starting to pick up points right now. Like I said, Canada is such a good track to race on, in my opinion. So, yeah, it's on to France next, I believe, which is not necessarily a track which produces great racing. However, a very nice track to drive on in the game because it's not got you know it's not it's completely different to Canada it's so wide and there's no walls or anything of the sort but uh yeah guys that is going to end off this episode of the F1 2019 career mode you'll see me doing R&D upgrades and stuff in the background I'll go through them in the next episode but if you guys enjoyed make sure to smash that like button subscribe if you want to see more and if you don't want to miss a video then make sure to hit that like uh, hit that no uh, bell can't speak in the uh, next to the subscription box i've completely lost my head <laughs> guys until next time thanks so much for watching peace